worship as we're coming in um, each week, especially this morning. Also want to just uh, shoot a quick happy anniversary to Steve and Linda this morning. It is uh, their anniversary. We want to just celebrate that with them this morning as we're getting ready for worship. Um, this week, also kind of continuing along the theme of music, uh, not this week, but the next week, we will have choir rehearsals. This week. Okay. Is it this week? Okay, I thought it was, and then I second-guessed myself standing yeah. up here. <laughs> so this week on Wednesday, right next door in the Chapel Center, choir rehearsals begin at 10 a.m. So we want to encourage you to be there for that. Um, then on Thursday, men, there is a men's Bible study at 10 o'clock on on Thursday morning, and after that is the men, monthly men's luncheon at noon. And then men's luncheon is the last Thursday of the month, and the first Friday of the month, which this month happened to be right next to each other. So this Friday morning, ladies, it's your turn, for the ladies' brunch Friday at 9.30. So both of those will be happening this week, men's lunch on Thursday, women's brunch on Friday morning. And then we also want to remind you that we do have a grandparenting conference coming up. So no matter what age your grandkids are, this conference is designed to help um, you think through how you leave a legacy, especially a spiritual legacy, to your grandkids. There will be speakers such as Tony Evans and Mike Singletary, several different um, kids and family experts. There's a whole list of them on the website. And Next week, we'll have an insert with some more information. But we want to let you know about this. It's not until October 20th, but there is a cost for this because it's a national conference that we're having the opportunity to host here. Um, and the price goes up after September 11th. So if you are interested, we encourage you to register before September 11th when it's a little bit cheaper. So we want you to check that out. There's more information in the bulletin. There's more information on our website as well. All right, with that, I want to encourage you to welcome one another this morning. So let's stand up and greet one another. loving us and comforting us no matter what is going on in our lives. God, I just ask that you help me, that you help each of us to 
to just stop during these next few moments, to take some deep breaths and to remember who you are and the privilege that we have to worship you, God. We ask that you would do this in our midst this morning as you've promised. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. All right, Steve. Well, these wonderful folks are Steve and Meryl Lee Seawald, and they've been attending Sun Lakes Community Church for a few months. And uh, Steve, where did the two of you live for many years before coming to Arizona? We're from uh, Berthoud, Colorado. Um, six months short of 70 years. <laughs> Well, Steve, I understand <clears throat> that you rode the school bus with someone who lived on the family farm near your family farm in Colorado. Who might that be? Well, I was thinking about that the other day. That was nearly 60 years ago. <laughs> I don't, I have a hard time remembering yesterday, but <laughs> that was Linda Vogel. Um, your all-star piano player. <laughs> and at that point, she lived about, their family lived about maybe two miles straight south of our farm. Um, and those days, that was your next door neighbor. So um, yeah, Linda and I did ride the school bus together and um, um, honestly, she pretty much behaved herself. So. <laughs> Now, do I understand that you actually taught her to play the piano? Uh, no. No. Um, their family, the Vogel family, is very, very musically talented, um, highly respected people in, in that area. All right. Well, Mary Lee, would you tell us about your children and grandchildren. <laughs> <laughs> you want me to talk for a long time? <laughs> Not too long, but yeah. <laughs> we have two children, our daughter Jenny um, and our son Jeff. And Jenny, um, she ended up with a double master's from the University of Nebraska in education. And she worked for uh, four or five years in inner city, Kansas City working with uh, special ed high school kids. Um, it was extremely difficult, and teachers in that situation burn out very quickly, which she did. She, um, then she and her husband started a business where they manage a company that takes care of um, maintenance for two large production plants. But then recently, she's taken a job with the judicial, judicial system in her county where she's working with youth again. And she's taken part in some um, adoptions of older children, which she said has been very rewarding. She has two kids, Brecken and Cedar, and I'll talk about them in a minute. Um, our son, Jeff. <laughs> is um, he started out at a technical school and he had his own business as a um, diesel mechanic, but he really wasn't very happy and he finally decided to put his two loves together, agriculture and flying. And so he now owns an aerial spraying business in Kansas and he's found what he loves to do. And he has two stepsons, um, and we're older, and so through them we now have two great-granddaughters and one great-grandson on the way. Now, your granddaughter recently had a significant achievement. Can you tell us what that was? She's very active in um, 4-H, and she has, she's, she and her, her, with her mom's help, have been breeding animals and working really hard in, um, the breeding and the uh, genetics yeah. okay. and yeah. showing, showing. And so recently she's had m quite a few, almost every time she shows she's been grand champion or reserve grand champion. And in two weeks she'll be showing at the Kansas State Fair. So 
we're hoping that that continues. Very good. Okay. Well, Steve, I understand you had a business venture that you pursued for several years with Linda's cousin, Ron Vogel, who has sung here several times. What was that business you guys did together? There was a organization in Longmont um, that on the airport that three guys owned 37 hangars on the uh, airport in the city of Longmont. I rented a hangar from another company for several years and for my airplane and I decided, you know, there's got to be a better way than me writing somebody a check every month to put my airplane in there. I got a call from Ron Vogel one day stating that one of the three partners was wanting to sell his shares of their hangers. I ended up buying seven hangers um, and so I was one of the partners. Um, the actual guy that I bought those hangers from, his wife was the mayor of Longmont. So. Um, I understood why Ron was in that organization. Um, but anyway, that's how I met Ron. Uh, we've been friends for many years before that. Um, we keep in touch probably every 35, 45 days we'll call each other. And, and so if it wasn't for Ron's uh, communication to me about these were for sale, um, yeah, I, I wouldn't have had, I would have still been paying for a hangar. <laughs> so were you a general aviation pilot, I gather? I got my license in 1984, and it, it is general aviation. Ron is certainly a, one of the highest commercial pilots that he retired several years ago from, uh, I'm not sure what airlines it was, but United Airlines, but he was, he was on the top. <laughs> well, what kind of plane did you fly mostly? My last one, I had like five or six different planes. My last one was a Rockwell Commander 112 TCA. Now that means nothing to nobody, but it was a very high-powered, single-engine, retractable gear airplane, complex airplane. Um, that was my last one. Very good. Well, Church, uh, these are just amazing, delightful people, and I would recommend that uh, you try to get to, to know them uh, better. Um, they are they're just uh, really special, and it's great to have them uh, be part of our church. So thank you, Steve and Marilyn. Thank you so much.
to bow down Here I am to say that You're my God You're all together lovely All together worthy All together wonderful to me For theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Blessed are those who mourn, for they shall be comforted. Blessed are the gentle, for they shall inherit the earth. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. Blessed are the merciful, for they shall receive mercy. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they shall see God. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called sons of God. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Join me as we sing today, Rejoice in the Lord Always. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice, 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 and I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, and again I say rejoice. Rejoice in the Lord always, again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Rejoice, rejoice, again I say rejoice. Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. Oh, my day, I want to praise the wonders of your mighty love. My comfort, my shelter, and strength than every breath all that I am never cease to worship you so in the Lord of the earth let us sing power and majesty praise to the King mountain bow down and repeat the sun of your day. I sing for joy at the work of your heart. Forever I'll love you, forever I'll find. Nothing compares to the promise I have in you. seas will roar at the sun of your name. I sing for joy at the work of your heart. Before, before I have you forever I'll stand. Let nothing compares to the promise I have in you. 
so thank you for what we're about to receive. Father, we, uh, we so much have been blessed beyond measure. Thank you for allowing us to give a portion back in Jesus' name. Amen. Instead of playing an offering, offertory for you this morning, um, I'd like to share a reading that I read this week. We're wrapping up today with the Beatitudes. And I think it's good for us to have um, lots of reminders of those about how blessed we are. We really are blessed. So what do the Beatitudes mean to me? In this beautiful section of scripture, Jesus summarizes his moral teaching and I'm going to have you say them, and then I'm going to tell you what it means to me. 
Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That means to me, blessed are the lonely, for they will find friends. Blessed are the depressed, for they will be uplifted. Blessed are the broken, for they will be made whole. Blessed, blessed are the challenged, for they will win. <laughs> and blessed are the impoverished, for they will receive. Next one. Blessed are those who the mourn. Lord. They shall be comforted. Blessed are those who have suffered great loss, for they will be healed. Blessed are the empty, for they will be filled. Mm -hmm. Blessed are those who feel their spiritual poverty, for they will become rich. Blessed, blessed are, are the meek, for there will inherit the earth. That means blessed are the humble and the modest, for they will be rewarded. Next one. Blessed, blessed are, are those, those who, who hunger. hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they shall be satisfied. That means to me, blessed are those believers who seek knowledge, for they will be enlightened. Next. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are those with sympathetic hearts and sincere compassion for the spiritual needs of others, for they will be cared for. Next. Blessed are the pure in heart, for they will see God. That means blessed are those who are sincere with a true inward purity, for they will find truth. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they will be called the sons of God. That means blessed are those who are active for peace, for they will find peace. Blessed are those who mourn. I'm sorry. Blessed are those who are persecuted. There should be that. Blessed are those who are persecuted because of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. That means to me, blessed are those who confess Christ before men and are ridiculed for their faith, for they shall triumph. And the last one, blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say of evil against you because of me, Jesus. That means blessed are those who are slandered for the true faith, for they are the children of God, if not here on earth, then certainly in heaven. So stand with me and sing, praise God from whom all blessings flow. seated you are blessed amen God of justice love and mercy pour our wisdom on your soul by yourself all staining power keep our spirit strong and whole lift our eyes to see your vision of our world in urgent need grant us courage then to follow Spirit with mercy, with compassion, as we come in. Our 
overcome the weakness. May our strength be ours to share. Press our hearts to know the struggle. One of ones who cannot see. Brother, sister, all who suffer. May our kindness set us free. if you would. Father, we so thank you for today. Lord, we admit our world is in a mess. Just this morning, reading the news, the shootings at football games and Major League Baseball games, on markets. Lord, we desperately need peacemakers. So, Father, we ask that you would look at our world and draw out those that will settle for nothing less than peace. God, would they have a boldness from you to call out righteousness, a boldness to stand in the midst of rejection. Father, we pray for those in our church that are not feeling well, whether they are in the hospital or at home being cared for. Lord, would you give their caregivers wisdom and knowledge? Would they be compassionate? And those, Lord, that even some that are watching on TV right now, remind them that you love them. You have an amazing plan for their life. love you. We thank you. In Christ's name. Amen. Wish I could turn back time, look back without regret, walk with his hand in mine, the years before.
I'm not as jumpy today as I normally am, but uh, I um, began on Thursday, um, began what's called an episode flare-up with my MS. And um, I was, what, what makes me feel good about that is I was at the baseball game and all of you that went, thank you so much. I think we had 28 there, but I was walking with a cane. And uh, I love the fact that Bev came up and said, Pastor, you need to see a, a chiropractor. Cardi was it a cardiologist? <laughs> because I was walking with a cane? Anyway, I said, well, Bev, it's, it's my MS acting up. And she said, I didn't know you had MS. <laughs> Which, here's why that was good. Because hopefully in a few weeks you won't know I still have it so uh, but I I just appreciate the prayers um, and if you didn't go to the game you'll get another chance I think next month you don't I mean they're just so much fun getting together with each other and uh, just enjoying that outing so uh, there'll be another chance next month for you to go it's sure good uh, to see Bruce and Carolyn with us are you guys home for the winter now? This is just a flyby, right? Man. Okay, it was Maui, but praise God you weren't there then. Or you weren't, you're not there now. Canada or California? What's next? California. We'll be praying for you guys. You're suffering for the Lord, so. <laughs> Love you. Thanks, thanks for being here. Um, if you have your Bibles this morning, do me a favor and turn to Matthew chapter 5. And we are finishing up today our study in the Beatitudes. I so appreciate Phil last week. Uh, when I went to Phil and asked him, hey, I, I'm going to be gone during this mini-series. Is there any way you could just speak for me and you can do whatever you want. And he said, aren't you going to still be in the series? And I said, yeah. And he gave me the most indignant answer anyone that you could ask speak could. He said, do you think you're the only one that knows the Beatitudes? <laughs> I said, McConnell, just do whatever you want. Do whatever you want. The bottom line of the Beatitudes is... Uh, it's pretty basic, and I want to go back to where we began and where we started. Now, remember, in the Beatitudes, there is no presentation of salvation. Jesus was not presenting how you could become a follower that wasn't called Christianity then. It was just becoming a, a follower of the way. And he explains in the Beatitudes... Here's what the way is. 
So there's no explanation for how to get saved, but it is an explanation of how the saved should live. Now, I want you to know if there is anything. Now again, he's in in the hillside area of Jerusalem. It was a, a upper middle class area. And the scribes and the Pharisees were the ones that made most of the audience. The rule keepers, those that really wanted to catch him on messing up. And this series, they call it Sermon on the Mount. What's funny is, um, it really it wasn't a, ser- it wasn't a sermon. It was a ser- it's one of five lectures or dissertations in the book of Matthew, and it's one, this is, uh, the reason we say that is they are his longest speeches, lectures, found anywhere else. I mean, he spends time explaining, here's what this way is going to be. You'll see that in Matthew 19 and, and some other ways in Luke and in and John, but mostly in Matthew is where he spends the majority of his time explaining how the saved should walk. And then when we get out of the Gospels and we get into the letters and everything else that were written by those that saw Jesus or those that were part of that early movement, they were continuing the dissertations about how those that are followers of the way can live like they are followers of the way. That's why those are so important. And we forget that so often. We do. We look at some, we're going to begin next, a series in James. Um, And what I love about where we're going right now is my two favorite books in the entire Bible. And you you hear me say that about different books. But really, my two favorite on Wednesday nights, we're going to spend the next 37 weeks going through the book of Proverbs. One chapter a week. We're just going to spend time. And we have some weeks in there that we're taking off or doing something different. But then we're going to go through the book of James and unpack that and ask God to give us wisdom. It is the most practical book in the New Testament for followers of Jesus Christ. It covers everything and then some about how we can just embrace our faith and how we can live it out. So I want to encourage you. And by the way, we are, uh, like we did during one of our other series, I don't remember which one, but we gave some books out where you could take notes. So we have ordered those, and if you want to get some, Tracy, how do they do that? In the entry next Sunday, and if we run out, we'll buy more. I want to encourage you, take one and one only, but take your sermon notes in that book, and uh, that's going to help you do it. So hopefully you've been taking notes on the Beatitudes. This was a complete contrast to what the scribes and the Pharisees taught. Just understand that complete contrast. I was changing the title early this morning, and um, I told Tracy, I said, I want you to change the title uh, to Peace, Persecution, and I needed another P, and I couldn't find one. And sure enough, she walked in three or four minutes later and threw that next one in, and I don't, I don't yeah, there you go. Peace, Persecution, and Put Down. And that's how we need to understand that as Jesus wrapped his study up in the Beatitudes, he wrapped it up kind of on one of those grand, uh, is it, Linda, is it a crescendo? Uh, Just a, a big ending, right? Well, this is his big ending to the Beatitudes. Notice what it says here in verse 9. Blessed are the peacemakers. I really wasn't sure I understood that word. I, uh, earlier this week, in fact, studied it earlier in the week, and I, I really couldn't get my arms around it still. And just the word simply put is this. Peacemaker is a reina pomas. A reina pomas. And what that means, it's, it means someone that will settle for nothing less than peace. 
In my prayer a little while ago, that's what I meant. Now, children of God, we need to realize, I, Mona and I were talking yesterday. Uh, we happened to be in Florentino's, and we were eating some lunch, and sitting one table away from us was a member of a church that I've known for, not this church, I've known for years, and I, I wasn't eavesdropping. It was one of those people that just talks loud, and I think they want the restaurant to hear. So, Mona and I are talking, and, and I wasn't going to go over and say, Hi, how you doing? It's nice to see you again. We had had a couple of conversations that weren't necessarily pleasant in the past. So I just thought, he's got his space, I've got mine, I'm going to leave him alone. And as we're eating, he was with a group and they had, you know, were exchanging small talk. But I couldn't help but notice he wasn't a peacemaker at all. He found everything in the world to complain about or to talk about. He knew the waiter by name and he paid his bill. The waiter was so gracious and walked over and spoke to each one of them by name. And he walked away. And this gentleman, believer, follower of Christ, waited till he got about 10 feet away. And in front of everyone, he said, how about my receipt? I paid you. You give me my receipt. The waiter just simply said, man, I'm sorry. I'll go get that. Very kind. Walked back, gave it to him, and he said, next time we're in, and evidently he goes there weekly, next time I'm in, I'm going to wait and get, make you give me my receipt before I pay. And the wait, waiter just very gently said, well, that's not how it works, and turned around and walked away. And I was proud of the waiter. But the stuff didn't end there. He decided, and the people at his table decided they were going to have, after they had had their lasagna, they were going to have what's called, and some of you eat this on Sunday afternoons, it's called roasted preacher, where, where you find everything in the world that you can just say, well, this would have been better or that would have been better. He was complaining about the church's insurance. The church pays insurance all. They're nothing to pay about. We don't get to decide those numbers. And then he was complaining about the youth pastor. And then I think he was throwing the preschoolers in that group. He wasn't a peacemaker. Now, I'm not a peacemaker. But I wanted to go over there and be a peacemaker. I wanted to go over there and, and that's what I thought peacemaker was. I thought it was a verb that meant you go and you command peace. That's what I thought it was. That's not it. A peacemaker has the ability to remain peaceful in all circumstances. To, he has the ability, he or she have, has the ability to maintain their peace and to find something good in a bad situation. But also not allow that to continue. They're not going to be a disruption, but they're going to try to be a solution to the problem. They'll be called the sons of God. You know what's beautiful about that is it is spoken, Jesus spoke this with the tone, with the verbiage of those whom my God esteems as a son. Now think about that. If you're here today and you know Jesus Christ is your personal Savior, we need to be peacemakers because he sees us in light of who the Father is. How embarrassing would it be if Jesus were to return while I am chewing out a waiter? Both of us are followers in Christ. And I'm chewing this guy out because the meat was tough. And all of a sudden there's a noise and we're being transformed and I look over and the waiter's with me and we're just flying up through the sky. I, man, I better say I'm sorry or something on the way. Are you esteemed? Are you esteemed? If Jesus were here today talking, would he speak with the verbiage and with the tone and, and with the inflections that identify that you are in the family? That's exactly what that means. You are in 
my family, God says. I'm never embarrassed by you. I don't ever, I'll never disclaim you. You are in my family. Blessed are the peacemakers, for they shall be called the sons of God. Verse 10. Blessed are those, in fact, I'm going to read it out of the Bible here. Blessed are those who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. So, I want you to see how these tie in. If, and I'm starting with the kingdom of heaven, by the way. If Jesus said, you are in my family, and don't forget, our family lives in heaven. Now, if you can't get excited about that, you you just need to have somebody throw hot water on you. That is exciting. Not only does Jesus say, you, you, uh, you and I have the same name. We have the same DNA in our blood. And never forget where you live. Never forget what your forwarding address is. My daughter is here with us today. And she's a new... I always love it when she comes to church. Um, she has a new home in Phoenix and uh, just a beautiful place that she's fixing up. But every day there's still a piece of mail that comes to my house. I told the postman a few weeks ago, I said, she doesn't live here anymore. And he said, well, this is her address. And I said, not anymore. Well, sir, I'll take it back and resend it. And I said, no, this is still her house. And she's still going to be forwarding me mail there. Why? Because that's been home for her since she was a little, little girl. Just like her brothers and her sister and her cousin and my father-in-law. That's kind of been the place that we unite, the place that we gather, the center of our being has always been on that corner of Orchid and Evergreen. The place you have always been chosen to reside is heaven. We forget that sometimes. So if we back up and say, well, blessed are Those who persecute you, who have been persecuted for the sake of righteousness. Now, I want you to know that persecuted is not what you think. That does not mean martyr. Martyr is a totally different word. Martyr is is a totally different scenario and different verbs are used to prescribe it and to uh, talk about it. But persecuted, simply put, means this. It's dioko, and it's one who has been made to run. One who has been made to run. Now, there are some things that make us run faster than others. I had the privilege yesterday to meet Dale, Jan's brother. And we're in the house talking, and, uh, and I wasn't being rude, I promise. But I asked him, I said, Dale, how old are you? And that, I know that I wouldn't have done it if it was a woman, I promise. But his answer made me think about where he lives. He said, well, on earthly years... The earth calls me 87 years old. All right. But in godly years, I am 87 and nine months. <laughs> and then he didn't stop there. He, I mean, he didn't ask, I'm not going to worry about offending you in my preacher or anything. He says, I'm 87 and nine months because the word of God says, he knew me when I was in my mother's womb. Those are the kind of folks that can stand up and be a peacemaker. Do you see how they're connected? Are we willing to take a stance and say, this is who I... Now listen to this. Here's exactly what Dale said. This is who I am in Christ. 
This is what I stand for in Christ. Now, once he said that, he and Mona just got in a grand conversation uh, about the uh, rules in uh, Minnesota. Minnesota, right? Minnesota and, and Arizona and the, the, what is the legislation that's being passed right now. Uh, so there's two peacemakers there talking about how to make peace. And I really just want to go down and boycott the state senate. I just want to go, instead of holding a nice banner, I'm, I'm the kind of guy that would go down and just throw rocks. And you know what? Nothing is ever accomplished by throwing rocks. Now, some say, well, I'm, yeah, I'm one of those persecuted Christians. Why? Well, I just, you know, my neighbors, they won't go to church, and I think they think I'm a freak. And so I just don't talk to them anymore. I don't talk to them about it. That's not being a peacemaker. That's just being dumb. You know how many people we can win over by simply being peacemakers? Mona and I have some neighbors who she was diagnosed with cancer. And um, Mona and I took some dinner over. Tracy took some dinner over. And we got a call on Saturday. And I, I couldn't answer the phone, and he left a message. And these are Jim's words, and it was such a blessing, because he, normally he talks a little different than this. He said, man, I just wanted to give you some good news, and we know it's a result of you and your church praying that Linda is 99.999% cancer-free. And he said, man, we just knew where that came from. And I just wanted to call and let you know. Now I want you to hold me accountable. The next step in ministering and loving and being a good neighbor is what? Hey, you know those folks that were praying for you? Come and meet them some Sunday. Just come and, and sit and just meet these folks that already know you. You see, we can't take no as a first answer. And there will be times that we have to leave or run but the majority of the time we are called let's pray for that right now father somebody's life evidently has been radically changed and may never been be the same again so we just looked up those ambulance workers would you give them wisdom and the fire department uh lord and would you just be with uh whosever life is being messed with right now in Jesus' name, amen. So in verses 11 and 12, we see basically the same thing. Blessed are you when men cast insults at you and persecute you and say all kinds of evil against you falsely, but it's on account of me. Isn't it, it's easy when we are in a conversation with someone of, of a different faith or a different belief or maybe just different moral principles and values. And they don't agree with us and they might make some sarcastic comment. That has nothing to do with your relationship with God. It has to do with your relationship with them and your Christian worldview. Never back down from your Christian worldview. But... When people persecute you and they throw insults against you. Notice that's really easy. They throw insults at you. And they say mean things about you. And they talk mean and trashy out in the world. In the, on, because of account on me, Christ said. If you don't think the scribes and the Pharisees were mad before, guess what? They're getting ready to throw some insults called rocks. Because that right there summarized that it, the way was following Christ. When he said me, it literally was personal pronoun. Listen, that people are going to chase you down. They're going to talk trash about you. And because of me, they may even talk bad about you in the street. Blessed are you. 
when that happens. Blessed are you when that happens. Your reward in heaven is great. You know, the verse 10, your reward is the kingdom of heaven. I want to encourage you during the race of life, that simply put means your finish line is in heaven. The, the ultimate goal, the ultimate finish line that you're going to cross is in heaven. And then we get down to verse 12, and it says your reward in heaven is great. And that's the admonition, stay in the race. Stay in the race. Don't get tired of running and stop. Stay in the race. And in that wrapped up study on Friday night, I thought about this and the amazing church God has given me the ability to pastor because it is filled with followers of the way that sometimes just might need to be reminded, stay in the race. You didn't retire to rest. You retired to run harder. You retired to run faster. Some of you don't want to hear that. But stay, no matter what. Stay in the race. Oh yeah, sometimes we might have to grab a can or two. Sometimes it might get a little bit awkward. But no matter what, stay in the race. Linda's going to come. We stay in the race because Christ is our all in all. All in all. And it's sweet to trust in His ability. It's sweet to know that He gives us the ability to stay in the race. Sing with me. You are my strength when I am weak. You are the treasures that I seek. You are my all in all. Seeking you as a precious jewel. Lord, to give up I'd be a fool. You are my all in all.
acapella. Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I prove Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust I'm going to ask Steve Whitson if he would stand and close in prayer, close us in prayer. And um, in a little bit of housekeeping work I've got to take care of. I need Marty Hester and Barb, if, before you leave, I just see you up here for a second. I need, I need a favor is what I need. <coughs> Steve. Yeah. Father God, we thank you for this congregation and for this pastor. I ask your blessing on this pastor as he deals with health issues that are very difficult and challenging. Strengthen him. I ask you to be with every member of this body this week. Strengthen us. Help us to be bold in our faith. And be with us. In Jesus' name, amen. God bless you.